Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video will be in continuation to my Azure Event Hub series in which I have already created one video which has a lot of information about Azure Event Hubs. I do recommend watching that video first prior to this one. And in this video, I will connect Azure Event Hub to the Databricks. I will stream some data. I will stream some real-time data into my Azure Event Hub. And I will actually use Databricks to connect to Event Hub and fetch that data. So let's move on to the portal and see how we can do that. In fact, in, I'll let you see this particular playlist, right? I have this Azure Event Hub. If you click here, this is the video where I have a very detailed 32 minutes explanation on Azure Event Hub and it is really mandatory to watch this video prior to, you know, uh, you watching this one. So coming on to the Event Hub, so there are a lot of basic concepts and the things explained there. So I will not repeat those concepts here again to save time. Now you already know to create an event hub, uh, you know, you need a namespace, right? So this is my namespace. So names are a little weird here. Namespace event hub is basically my namespace name. Event hub namespace is the event hub that I've created inside this namespace. All these concepts already explained in that video. Now uh, event hub namespace is the event hub that I have created, right? Now I have an event hub. Now basically I want to stream some data into the event hub, right? Now to stream some data into the event hub, I have created a PyCharm file. Let me show you. Actually, I fetched it from internet. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think from the Microsoft Docs. I'll um, I'll share the link with you in the description box uh, from where uh, where I have fetched this particular script. So if you see, this is a pretty short script. It is doing nothing. It is just sending some data. This is the data, right? This is the events that flows to the Azure Event Hub from this whenever this particular script runs, right? Now, if you see in this script, the only thing to note here is this producer, right? And here, if you see, there's a connection string. So now basically my strict script has to send data to event hub. Now to do that, I need some kind of username or password, right? So in the similar way, we have something called as connection string. I have talked about con connection string even in my past video as well on event hub. Do watch that. Now in this connection string, if you see from where did I get this connection string? I got this from my event hub that I have created. So you can specify uh, you know this uh, in fact let me show you this I have this namespace and if I go to shared access policy here if I click on this uh, you know key symbol I have this policy right this is the name of the policy this is created by default you can uh, you know create your own as well with any XYZ name if I click on this I have explained this earlier that <clears throat> this manage send listen right so these are the uh, permissions that this key holds right now if i click if i check here there's a connection string so this connection string is similar to your username and password to connect to event hub now let me copy this actually so the moment i copy this if i go to my event hub uh, go to my script you will see let me paste it this is how my uh, you know connection string looks like it has an endpoint endpoint basically it has the url for my namespace that i have created then it has shared access key name right the shared access key name if you see it is same as this name right so this is the shared access key name and let me go back to script and this is the shared access key right so this is basically this is the username and this is the password so i'm telling my script that you log into this particular url go to the shared access key and this is the username and this is the password basically you know i'm telling you in a very layman term so that you all understand and also not just that you also need to mention your event hub name so if i drag this to the right hand side you see i have mentioned my event hub name right so this is the name of my event hub event hub namespace now why i have mentioned it in my previous video i have already mentioned that in one particular namespace you can create n number of event hubs right i can go ahead and create another event hub right now but here what essentially we do is in the script i have to mention that which event hub i want to send the data to i can send the data to any like i have let's say 100 event hubs right now out of those 100 event hubs which event hub do i want to send that data right so for that we have this event hub name right i hope this is very clear now and in fact let me run the script 
uh, and even before running let me go to the event hub here and let's see uh, the number of requests so if you see the incoming request to the namespace is zero incoming messages is zero like right now let me go to the pycharm and let me try to run my script so the moment I run my script, what it will do, it will send these events, right? Hard-coded events. It will start this process and it will send these events to my event hub, right? Now, if I go back to my event hub and if I try to refresh it, we will see that there are events coming in right now, correct? So basically, our event hub has started receiving the events just because I executed this main.py. Basically, I executed this particular code which is sending events to my Azure event hubs. Now, in fact, let me go to the data bricks. Now, let us see that how we can actually, uh, you know, work on Databricks, connect event hub to the Databricks. So basically, if you see, this is just a theory on the event hub path. You can go and watch my first video for all these things. So the very first thing that you need to be aware is that you need to install a let install Maven library on your cluster in order to make it work. So let me in fact show you my cluster. So if you see, this is my cluster and it is running on let me show you the runtime as well so if you see it is running on scala 2.12 right and if you see this library over here let me open this so it has event hub library so you need to install this and you need to make sure that you install a proper version of it so if it uh, right now since i'm uh, you know running spark 2.12 version so in the similar way you have to install the correct version otherwise uh, you know it might not work out for you and so let me go back so once you have installed this library and in fact let me show you how to install this library as well in case uh, you have any doubts on that so if you see this library section install new if you check on this maven option over here so you can just copy this uh, dot com let me copy here this is the coordinate you can find it online very easily and click on maven and you can just simply type in these uh, these coordinates over here and just click on install it will go ahead and install the library for you uh, and then let me go back to my notebook if you see so these are some import statements regarding event hub and some functions which i have imported now if you see basically here also i need to make sure that i establish a connection between event hub and my databricks right so that connection string i'm trying to build here this is uh, actually written in scala right and now i'll tell you how it has been written so if you see this is the connection string that has to be built right now to build that connection string so this is a default syntax you will find it online very easily just open it you will find this and here you have to you know put in your namespace name so i have put it as a variable namespace event hub so this is my namespace name basically then second is my event hub name i will provide my event hub name that which event hub i want to connect then we have a sas key right sas key name root manage shared access key now which is the sas key this sas key is same as what i showed you over here right so if you uh, have any name i have it at the namespace level let me sh give you the namespace key so this is my namespace and here you go so if you see this is the policy name you can have whichever policy name uh, you know all these things were explained in my previous video so I don't want to repeat it again so this is SAS key name here and this is the SAS key now where you will get the SAS key from the SAS key you will get it from this connection string only you have the SAS key over here so let me copy it and in fact the first one also um, but better I will show you this SAS key so if you see this is the shared access key right so you just need to provide these details and the moment you provide these details it will build a connection string for you right so you have something called as microsoft azure event hub dot connection string builder so it will take these as the input parameters and it will build a connection string for you now the moment you have your connection strings ready right 
now basically what you do here is you have something called as custom event hub parameters now here what you do is whatever connection string you have got from here you convert it into a string format and then you define how many events you will get for each trigger so when you talk about streaming you have a concept of trigger right with each trigger with each time you run it how many events you want to capture so right now i have mentioned as five like i want to capture five events whenever this runs right now similarly you have something called as incoming stream right basically this is the same uh, you know just like you read a data frame right in the similar way you have something called a spark dot read stream api where you know the format is event hub because you are trying to read the data from event hub you have built these connections over here now you're trying to read the data from event hub and you have provided all the parameters required right and then you are just trying to load it so let me in fact uh, let me just uh, run it let me just run all the cells above so basically it is not a continuous stream that i'm running but uh, yeah it will uh, you know check the incoming stream and it will try to print the schema now if you see what i've tried to do what did i try to do here i tried to print the schema of my incoming stream because the stream that you get will be uh, the, you know the data that you get will be in the binary format the, the data that you will get from the event hub will be in the binary format so if you see this incoming stream dot print schema it has something called as body it has something called as partition offset sequence number so details regarding this partition offset and sequence number i have explained it in my previous video so do check it out it is a very 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 important concept now nq time is nothing but the timestamp when uh, you know your uh, event hub has loaded the data and then your partition key your publisher and you know little bit properties so this body basically has your data which is in the binary format you need to understand that and you if you see it says nullable all true right now in fact let me try to print this i'll uh, comment out the schema part of it now incoming stream dot write stream api output mode append now i am trying to print it to, to the console basically there is no uh, you know third party or there is no storage account where i'm trying to write it i'm just trying to print it on the console let me just run it and see do we have any data so if you see here it is running the command and uh, if you see uh, you know batch zero so you will get the data in the batch of fives right because I have mentioned it so if you see it has uh, you know printed nothing for the first batch it did not see any data but for the uh, for the zeroth batch but for the first batch it started seeing the data and if you see the body it has all binary data you can't read it right let me move it down if you see it find it five rows so it has printed the five rows one two three four five and then it has went back to the event hub to take another batch if it has the data now it had uh, okay let me go back and tell you this as well so if you see this is the data that i was printing right first event second event third event fourth event fifth event and six so total six events i was sending now i have kept my max events to read as five i have said that in a in one particular batch when you go to the event hub when you connect to event hub just take only five records right it goes and it picks up only five records from there and not more than that so any records more than that will be picked up in the next batch so that is why if you see the this batch the first batch had five records but the next batch it did not pick the first uh, the sixth record right sixth record came in the next batch right so this is how it uh, it shows up the data so let me just try to cancel it because uh, i have put it as await termination now these concepts are related to your uh, streaming and i'll try to make another video or a series on streaming part so that uh, you know you understand uh, you know how it works so it will wait for my termination for the user termination now uh, since you cannot read this data because the data coming from this uh, event hub will be in this binary format now what you have to do is you have to do something like this incoming stream so this is where our data is there now with column offset offset basically i have explained earlier in my previous video it's a big concept i don't want to repeat it here now i am adding another column time basically this is the time when uh, you know event hub is sending you the data so uh, i am casting it to the timestamp type and let me uh 
and this is the body right now the body since it was in binary format i'm casting it to the string type so that it is more readable right and then i'm trying to display these message uh, basically this data frame right so uh, probably this is the first video i think i'm making in scala so val uh, this is how you write a data frame in scala val and the data frame name so val messages display uh, your data frame which is your messages and uh, i have also try let me just run this cell actually then it will make more sense you will actually see how my data looks like and uh, you know how how it is working now it is running and in between do remember to check out my previous video on azure event hubs and do remember to subscribe and share my channel because most of you have not subscribed to my channel i don't know why it is free of cost you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel in the meantime while this is running so guys i actually paused the video because it was taking some time to run and here you go so it has started writing the output to the console and if you see it is picking up again this is the body right because this is the data that i sent first event third event fourth event sixth event so this is how it is picking up the events and this is the body now earlier if you look at the body how it was uh it was something like this you were not able to read it right this was the offset this was the sequence number and all you were not you were not able to read the data but now you are able to read the data because you have converted it into a string for math so i hope this is clear to you all and you don't have any issues on this do let me know in the comment section and in case you are you know not able to uh, you know relate to it or you are not able to uh, you know understand it in one go it might be a bit complex for the people who have not worked on streaming so i do recommend watching first and second video again together so that it is you know you understand it much better uh, in case you don't understand it it, it in fans first go do you know try to re re execute the video and try to uh, you know check it okay so even my you know what i'm saying i'm saying we execute so i think uh, you know i have become little more of a programmer instead of saying you know replaying the video i'm saying we execute so you don't need to execute anything just replay the video in case you did not understand it in one go but yeah this is how you read the data and also one more thing let me tell you that in case you want to write this data to the storage account you can do that you just need to pro provide the configurations of the storage account and you just instead of you know writing this to the console right i am writing it to a console i am writing it uh, as a console instead of writing it as a console you can write it in it in form of a delta table you can write it in form any format to the uh, basically storage accounts as well so i hope you like the video do let me know in the comment section if you have any doubts any queries or you want me to make video on any other topic as well so thank you so much for being till here but do remember to like subscribe and share